Welcome to Sewer Mutant, the podcast that takes you way underground to discover comics that you won't find anywhere else. This month, I'm joined by Miguel Angel Espinosa, creator of the urban fantasy tabletop role-playing game, Nahual. Nahual is based on the Mexican outlaw comic Operacion Bolivar by Edgar Clément, which just recently successfully raised funds on Kickstarter for a new printing in Spanish. So this episode is a collision of my interest in obscure comic books and indie tabletop role-playing games. In Nahual, you play super-powered angel hunters in modern-day Mexico City, but you don't just hunt the angels who invaded your continent. You run a side business harvesting angel parts, whether that's by running a taco truck that sells angel meat tacos or running a bar that sells angel blood wine. So yeah, it's pretty dark. And I got a chance to play play test Nawal with Miguel in 2018. And I can tell you it's a blast. The combination of angel hunting with running a business along with individual player characters, personal lives leads to really fun, messy role-playing scenarios. So if you think role-playing is just D&D, that's definitely worth checking out this game. Uh, it does a lot of interesting things that that you don't see in, uh, in D&D or traditional role-playing games. It's based on the Apocalypse World engine, which emphasizes storytelling, over rules and complex mechanics. So if you're into game, you might know that from Dungeon World or Monster of the Week. It also happens to be the same game engine I use for my cyberpunk game, Mission Driven. So before we get started, I just wanted to thank Crudler for letting us use his music on the show. And now, uh, welcome to the show, Miguel. Hey, hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I usually like to ask people... Uh, how they got into first got into comic books, but I don't even actually know if you're into comics apart from uh, you know doing adapting Operation uh, Boulevard. I mean, I am I'm not like uh, uh, I don't follow like ongoing series that much. I regularly go like for uh, works that are like self-contained, like graphic novels or stuff that's like three or four numbers, and, and that's it. I am not like buying like regular series that are in the 300 number plus like like that mm -hmm. but yeah so, like, like i like comics too yeah so how did you get interested in them uh in comics was with a friend on high school he he had a cousin that had a radio program about comics that was called dunas from because it, in in spanish at that time we the dune book where was translated as Dunas. Now the new film has it as Duna, a singular, like like the original mm -hmm. Dune. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the series, the program was called like that, but they took comics and he had a comics, a comic shop. So I went there and I started like looking at stuff and, and curiously enough, they had a couple of Mexican comic, like indie comics, like they weren't very good, but that it, it was interesting to me that to see that there were Mexican people doing comics too. Cool. Yeah. And so is that how you found uh, Operation Boulevard? That of, I found it later. A friend of mine like offered to me like uh, buy the first whole like TPB print because it was print also like a little like uh in a small parts first, but then right. in a in a magazine, right? Yeah, in a magazine. But then they 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 printed like the special like complete edition, and a friend of me a friend of mine has had it and and offered it to me to buy, and I found it very cool, but didn't have enough money. And a friend, another friend, was there with me when when he was offering, and he said like, "Yeah, I buy it." And then that friend lent it to me, and I was able to read it and. and and to this day, I'm like, damn it, I wish I had that money at <laughs> that moment. <laughs> nice, but yeah, that, nice. that's how I found out about that comic. And it, it was, yeah, it blew my mind when I, when, I, when I found it and when I read it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, I haven't been able to read it because I don't uh, read Spanish, unfortunately. But just looking at the, the artwork that I've been able to find and just knowing the, the context from, uh, from Nawal, it, um, I mean, it's... It's pretty out there. It's pretty subversive. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. How old were you when you found it? Was that like, did it make like an impression on you? Yeah, I think it was, I don't know, like early 20s, maybe 19 year old. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And, and the main impression, it was like, it was very different from everything else. Like, 
like again, like the 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 other comics, the other Mexican comics I've seen, they were trying like to mimic many of the of the popular American comics or even manga, like. Uh, but this was very unique, very its own thing. Like it wasn't to me. It appeared that it wasn't trying to mimic anything. It was like, and especially like towards the end of the story, like the art starts to like it has some collage in there, and then like very crazy stuff that I saw later in other comics, but at the moment I haven't seen before. So, so yeah, it, it definitely like had an impression on me. Yeah. At, yeah. At some point I, I originally wanted like to, to do comics before trying, before, before wanting to do role playing games. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a good spot to talk a little bit about role playing games then. Cause, cause I, I wanted to ask you also like how you got into, into role playing games and, um, particularly into more like indie role-playing games apart from, you know, from D and D or the white wolf games and that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Well, like, like many, like many of the players, my age, like we started with D and D like, uh, friends in, in some friends in my, in my neighborhood, like we got some, and at that time it, but there was an internet. So he, he got, a hands in a player's handbook and and it was photocopied and then like it was like we didn't even have any dice like we we had like to scramble like to get some dice and all that but but we love the game and we love the 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 interactions and and the way you play role playing games and so we hooked up and then when i went to university i found other other people that were also playing and 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 curiously enough like not curiously enough like obviously through this same comic book store like because it's it was like the only one here in town like i found like other players that then i i encountered in the university and then we 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 kept playing and then after a while we tried white wolf and then call of cthulhu like all the major ones and Mostly, I, it it was the only thing we were playing. Like until very very late, I was I I was starting to design stuff or or thinking about design for a while, be, even before discovering the in the the in the uh, games. Like doing doing that, like working with a while and starting to to research and look stuff in the internet. I found out about the forge like many years after it was done, uh, but then that led me to to basically to apocalypse world and when i found apocalypse world it was like again another moment of like wow like this is this is very unique very different to everything i've been playing and and everything i've been struggling with trying to adapt a comic book into a a, a class systems and levels and hit points and all that that stuff that i was used to with with other games seeing apocalypse world and seeing that you can do things differently and focus on the fiction and 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 then at that moment it clicked like i had i had some ro- some some drafts of my own like making st- stuff from scratch making a system from scratch combat system and everything and then when i when i found apocalypse world it was like no i don't need to do all that like here here it is like this engine is perfect for it like and, and yeah i i I deep dive and then that opened like the doors of the whole indie like uh industry and all the other games and and all the other people working on on, on those games. Cool, yeah. Uh, so let's back up a little. You said you wanted to write comics. I mean, have you made any comics? Is that or I, is that I, something you still pursue? I make I, I do I don't. I haven't for a while. I I I can draw so I, I wanted to, to draw comics. Uh, I did like it, and it was it's it's a funny story because um, Clement when, with his work like he's he's done the comics and but the, he also does like sketches or, or more than sketches like pencil drawings that he uploads to the to the to the web and and with with more stuff like like world build, world building stuff like with text and 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 a character and stuff like that and he uploaded i remember seeing in De- deviant art a couple of pages about the stages of nawality 
which were basically like levels of how powerful an award can be and how how the transformation changes uh, with those stages. So when I saw those, I was like, oh, this could be uh, cool in, a, in an RPG and I would love for a Mexican RPG to exist. So I sent a couple of messages to him, like email Clement and, and never got a reply. And then I said, okay, and I, I will I will work in, in in it like it doesn't matter if he doesn't reply because he's also very open with his work he's like it's out there like use it and and inviting people to create to to create stuff with with his work like he's he's perfectly okay with that so i i i kind of like started working on on drafts for the game but then i also did like a, I, I had a, an idea for a short story for a comic uh, set in in Clement's universe, so I was I was, I was gonna tell that story like I don't know ten twenty pages, and I did like five of those pages. Uh, it's, it's it was a uh, an award that was like haunting an angel, but in, in truth that angel was like bait because there was these other characters that haunted Nawales, and and he was gonna be like baited into that and ambushed, and and I did like six pages of. Four or five, something like that, and then I shared them on the internet, and Clement saw them, and then now I got here extension, <laughs> and then I talked to him at that moment about about the RPG, and 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 then I focused completely on the RPG, and and that story got like boxed. I, I never finished it. Yeah, it's, and it seems like you've just been really focused on doing a lot of stuff in the role playing game world ever since. Is that yes? Is that yeah. Right? yeah, like it took over like my like hobby, not only hobby now, like as a professional thing, it took over. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I introduced, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the game in the introduction, but um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe you could you know, um, talk a little bit more about the game and um and and the themes behind it yeah um especially I, anything that um i didn't say in the intro that you think people should know okay yeah um i mean like your your intro was, was pretty on point like it is i guess i can talk about how i myself struggled finding like a, a cohesive because Every time I try to like uh, playtest the game or, or explain it to people that didn't know the comics, I was like, oh, "This is hard." Like I know what it is about because I know the comics. And when I found it, like like players in Mexico who knew the comics also were like, "Yeah, totally." Like it's it's Nawales haunting angels. We know, but for, when I try to explain that to people that doesn't that don't know the comic or don't know anything about Clement's work. It, I, I myself struggled like, and I was like, yeah, it's angels, but it's it's from the conquista, but it's in the present. So, so it kept being like a very long introductory thing, and working through that, and and with help like also from people from the United States, like, and I also saw comments like from Mexican people in the United States, like saying like, oh yeah, this is this is neat like this is like a colonialism kind of thing and uh how you fight back that colonialism and the and the fallout of that like many years later because basically the thing is that the Nawales don't know how to use their power because before the conquista, they were shamans and they had all the knowledge but then when the conquistadors came with them the angels they uh they cut off those those roots and then people start to forget how those powers work so in the present day the nawales and the, the hunters they they have their power they know that it allows them to hunt angels but they don't understand it fully and they can't like um can use its full potential basically because because they are missing that route, which is kind of like uh in not not intentionally on my part, but it's kind of like a, a, a and I guess it this is like a direct 
inheritance of doing an adaptation of Clement's work because it, it is in Clement's work like it's like a, a, an allegory of like what Mexico is in present. Like we we have that we had that tradition and then it got cut off and then we had now this weird mixture of stuff with all its like issues and and good things and bad things like like um, I guess like that's part of the game not intentionally but by artifact of being an adaptation of what Clement is doing with his comics um and so can you talk a little bit about the development process i know it, it took a few years to put this together um mm-hmm. i think i first encountered it in 2016 or 2017 yeah and um i think it had already been around for some time and it's 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 only just now in print um so i think you know it'd be interesting for our listeners to hear a little bit about you know yeah the, the process what why it, you know why it takes so long to put together Tabletop <laughs> yeah. role playing game. So yeah, I, I, I know from my own experience, it takes a while. Yeah, lot. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like uh, like I was saying before, like I for a while, and, and I think I started in two thousand and twelve, like trying to put the, this game together with like from scratch with my own system and ideas and stuff. Like and then, like around I think two thousand fourteen or fifteen, I find out about the apocalypse world. And then I switched and then I started like to, I, at, at the moment, like we still had uh, uh, Google Plus and there I, I find a lot of people like designers and and uh, players also like very enthusiastic about indie games that helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, at, at, at the beginning I was just like copy pasting basically Apocalypse World, like like the playbooks and, and and the mechanics, like I, it was a weird mixture between the mechanics in Apocalypse World and, and the mechanics in Dungeon World, like which which was the first two games that I encountered on the system. Um, and yeah, for a while it, it it was like that, and and I felt like there was something that wasn't clicking, and I but also because I was trying to do a lot of stuff, like I wanted I I wanted to put. I was trying to put everything like you when you created a character, you should you will be able to choose between being a shaman, an angelero, which is a Spanish term for angel hunter or somebody who deals with angels, and then a, an, a diablero, which is somebody who deals with devils. Uh, and then the changarro was this thing which, which in the game, do you have a changarro, which is like a uh, a business that you own uh, together with all with the other players, and at first I was also like doing a single sheet for the Changarro, and everything there was so convoluted. So I I struggled for a while, and then uh, I met I I met Mark the Struman um, through playtesting too, but but Mark's help was was really really key into into making the game smooth and move forward, like. He he mentored me a lot, uh, and he has a lot of experience with PBTN and, and from Magpie Games and and their and their stuff they they published. So he he really helped me a lot, like narrow it down and 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 helped me with like design concepts, like um, holding environment, for example. He asked me like, "What's your holding environment for your, for your characters?" Like, I, I don't know. What is I, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so basically the from a design perspective, the holding environment is the thing that will help your players stick together. Don't go running, mm-hmm. doing their own thing by themselves. And it's very special. It's it's especially necessary in like urban fantasy or urban settings because cities are too big. Like for example, D and D, the dungeon itself and the party by itself is it's a holding environment. Like we are together because we are a party and we're going into a dungeon and we are we are stick together through the dungeon and. and don't split the party, right? Like if you split the party, <laughs> you'll get killed. But in an urban setting, it's like, yeah, I, I'm the side of the city, and cities are so huge that, and with so many people, that it's like very weird. Try to force the characters being together all the time. So, yeah, like that helped me. Like Mark's questions, he it was more 
the process was basically like that. He he was asking me questions more than telling me what to do. He he was all the time asking me questions like how this work, how were you doing this, how are you dealing with this, and make me making me think. So from that process, I narrowed it down to okay, players will only play um, angeleros, which is angel hunters. They will only hunt angels. I will deal with diablos and diableros later, and and. And then, like, okay, they have the Changaro. The Changaro will, will serve as a good holding environment. They all own it together. So they 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 are invested in it. So they, they are pretty interested in, in what happens with the Changaro. So it's a very good tool. And also, like, another part of the streamlining is, like, I, I, I didn't have playbooks where, like, like I said, I was copying just, like, stuff from other games. I was And playbooks were just, like, uh, the tough guy and the and the sensitive guy or the social guy and or the social character and the medic and stuff like that. But then, like through through those like back and forth with Mark and he asking me questions about the game and and making me think about streamlining stuff and and defining and and thinking more in like doing original design rather than just copying other games. I, I I came like to the conclusion like yeah now playbooks are gonna be just like the animal that you that is is your now uh, before that I had it like open like when you create your character if you pick like the tough playbook or the fighter playbook uh, you would say what animal you have like it, it it had some conditions like yeah if you are this type of character you have to be like a predator or something. From 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 the animals you will pick but it was completely open and then. I when I shifted and I said like no okay I I got to I got to pick a certain number of animals and just stick to those and then that helped a lot because then that informed like the whole personality of each playbook depending on the animal you transform into right yeah like it's it's like each play or each uh, animal has its own playbook yes. which uh, for listeners who aren't familiar it's sort of like a class in D&D so each class is, or each animal is a class, and then that actually is is tied to a personality. So, like you were saying, with like the the tough like, or more like aggressive character would be, I think I played that. It was like the jaguar. Yeah, the recall. jaguar. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and there's like the monkey is yes a little bit more of like a mischievous or free spirited type of character. So yeah, so that uh, I, I I thought that was really good how those those tied together and definitely made it easier to make probably decisions about uh, for I, on the player side, like what character you want to play. And like it gave, um, yeah, like a sense of how to play the character and play the game uh, be, based off of what you picked, uh, picked there. So I think that was a definitely a good design decision there, like actually tying the personality and the role to the animals in that way. Yeah. And it fit, it fit the fiction too, because in, in, like in the comics and 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 through through chats with with Clement on online chat, like because there is a stuff that is like like I'm I will stumble into and like I I don't I have no idea how this will work in in his world. So I will ask him the question and and it was funny sometimes he would he would reply to me like I don't know, but it's good like keep asking me these questions because now you are you are helping me like build the world like so it, it it became this weird like uh like hybrid of interaction when i was adapting the game but also stuff that i was asking him for the game was now things that he was thinking for the comics look so it was it was a funny thing but yeah like in 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 his work it basically and in the book says so like in the, when you read the books and, and you read about the nawal you are supposed to like the Nawal is supposed to be uh like the closest example and easiest example would be like the force. Like this this uh energy or this thing that it permeates the universe, like it's everywhere, the cosmos, like and if you tap into it, you can do like infinite amount of things and wonders. And that and and so then Clement said like the fact that you can turn into a certain animal, it's, it's like because you don't have like the whole picture of how this works. So that's just that just like 
to help you narrow all these things is like imagine an ocean and you take a cup with the shape of a jaguar and you draw water from that ocean with that cup that shape it like a jaguar and then now you can channel it because your personality is close to that of a jaguar and if your personality is close to that like as you were saying of a monkey then you will understand in a while and use it through that archetype or totem it's this is how i'm calling it in the game that animal totem which is the monkey which is which will help you like doing this and then in in the comics it is it appears too like there is like hybrid or chimeric transformations like there is there is mix of different animals so that basically means that you are getting out of your mold of just being a jaguar and you can now do other stuff like other creatures other things and that came into the into the game as like a like a choosing moves from other playbooks kind of thing mm -hmm. and are you looking at doing like expansions or like um i get or like a different game set in the same universe because you were mentioning like the uh the diablos and i remember that being like a subplot in uh in the game we played where there was like the, yeah, yeah yeah like the diablos are like uh yeah, they're being yeah, yeah. used as like uh dog like dog like similar to dog fighting where like people yeah, have exactly. these, these battles like so would that be like additional playbooks or just like a whole other game or like how would that yeah through the through the kickstarter we unlocked like uh additional additional stuff and i am i'm working now now that the book i mean the book is done. I'm I'm still finishing the Spanish edition, which has been a hurdle. But uh, I'm also starting to work, and I have some stuff already drafted for those supplemental materials that were unlocked through Kickstarter. And one of those were like the possibility to play as Diableros. So you, in the original game, you play as Angeleros or Angel Hunters. You hunt angels. You kill them. You turn them into into commodities. You sell them, like mainly like meat. Uh, but then, like, what happens is, like, in the fiction, when uh, when an angel hunter touches, touches an angel and the angel escapes, the angel starts, like, to decompose and to become earthbound. And in the end, that angel will turn and transform into a Diablo. So through the for the game, we are thinking, okay, uh, now what happens with those Diablos, like, there is Diableros, and, and in, in Clement's comic, there is this. There, it, there's always been like it's not my invention. So now the Diableros, you when you play as a Diablero, you will be like hunting those angels, but also like the interactions of the the core system needs to be more or less the same. Otherwise, I will be writing a complete new game. But like through the interactions of you hunting those Diablos, also having clients, and also having like to 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 work your own like business but it different different than what an angel will do like the the angelero will hunt the angels kill them sell them it's done the diableros trains those angels like and and keep them and they will have to 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 keep them in check like they will need to all keep training them and all and all and having them uh, because if if they get lazy the angel the diablo will will escape and and it will be like messy so yeah, like there is, there is in works. The, the playbooks will be the same playbooks, but then the changaro is the one that would change. Instead of having like a taqueria out selling angel meat tacos, you will have like a place where you train demons or diablos, and and you maybe turn them into like mercenaries or sell them or fight them or like, uh, but like the business model of the diablero basically. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Um, so shifting gears a little bit, uh, you also worked on the Zora role-playing game. Like, uh, how did that come about, and what was your uh, what was your involvement in that? Oh, I mainly did like lay out the stuff. Uh, I, I did all the layout of the book. Like, I was originally invited like to also write some stuff, but I was swamped like with trying to finish Nawal and then my my day job, and like I didn't I. I wasn't going to be able to write the stuff that I was like joining for. Uh, so, but I did all the layout, like the, the whole layout of the book is mine. Like, and I came to it because of, uh, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but Alan Barr, Barr. 
Yeah, yeah. From so, uh, Gallant Knight games. Yeah, exactly from Gallant Knight. Like he, I have, I've done some some small work for him before, like for from like smaller books, uh, and he he liked my work, uh, and he invited me like to do to do the writing and also to do the 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 layout. At, in the end, I was saying like, you know what, I can do all the layout, but I don't think I have the time to do all, like also some writing. And I had also write for him before for Alan for the oh, I forget the name of the game the espionage game that they published is I think it was I'm I'm blanking entirely in the game of the the name of the game. Yeah I don't know that one. Um well, it was I'll, like I'll, yeah I'll find it and I'll put it in the show sure. notes. Yeah. And um, um so yeah they 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 needed to have like stuff about the Cold War I, I think it was called Shadows. No, I I don't know. I'm I'm maybe. Oh, that that does sound right. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was basically a, like espionage during the Cold War. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's Cold War. Cold Shadows. That's the name of the game. Okay. Yeah, um, I just didn't realize they did that. Okay. Yeah. So and I did like they wanted to add some stuff for specific cities, and they asked me to write something from Mexico City, and I did, and they liked it a lot, and then. Uh, I also did a little bit of a, a mini setting for his uh, Tiny Dungeon book also. So yeah, like I've, I've worked before with Alan a couple, a multiple times and then from that, like he was like, you know what, we got this IP, I'm gonna, we want to do the Sorrow book. Uh, would you be interested? And I, of course, I would have loved to have written something for it, but I, it just wasn't possible with the timeline I had at the, at the moment. Yeah. So what are you working on now? I mean, there's the stretch goals, um, but I, uh, your website, uh, the Smoking Mirror Games, uh, yeah. has a couple other things listed. Uh, yeah, like uh, my intention is like to like I, I really I did something with Nawal that I I don't think I'm ever gonna do again, <laughs> which is like I published I I promised I will publish in both English and Spanish at the same time, and it was like at, at some point even Clement told me like just do English, like. And I was no, I, I want a game in Spanish. I want a Mexican game. Like I want to put it here in in our country. And yeah, like it's been <laughs> really tough. But like uh, um, after that, I said, okay, I want to I want to keep bringing uh, RPGs, different RPGs, uh, indie RPGs to to Mexico. So I had like now like two two um, how do you say two approaches. Like one would be like. Okay, on this, on the one side, I'm gonna be acquiring licenses for for indie games and translating them and, and publishing them in Mexico and all of Latin America. And on the other hand, I keep I want to keep making uh, games like original games, but to be completely honest, it's like the market is in the U.S. like or in the English language, like and mainly the U.S. Of course, like through Nawal Kickstarter, I was very surprised. Like people from Europe wanted the game, like they they backed the game. Like people from from Australia, and like I was like blown away. Like how, why somebody in Polonia wants to know uh, uh, wants to play a game of the Mexican <laughs> Angel Hunters? So yeah, I, it was it was a very nice feeling, but also like it. It shows me the numbers showed me like yeah like for this to be profitable like or or to be something that I can keep doing like I need to focus first like if it's a new game it has to be like in the in the American market so that I decided like Smoking Mirror games will be like focusing on on that like creating original games for mainly in English uh, for the international and the American market and and then I will I will. I want also to do translation of indie games for in Spanish to Spanish for America, Latin America and Mexico. Uh, but yeah, like in a, through a smoking mirror, like I I'm helping. Um, we we signed contract and all for for a five E setting, which is called Ixalba. Uh, it's a it's a friend of mine. Uh, Mexican friend of mine that that has been working on his setting like for a while and and I wanted myself also like 
since I begin since I began playing role playing games in D and D, I wanted like a cool Mesoamerican inspired setting, like uh, not Mastica and all that stuff, <laughs> but a good Mesoamerican inspired setting. So and and I wanted like to do that myself. But then when I saw what what Mario uh, was doing. Uh, his name is Mario Ortegon. He's, he goes by Warriors on the internet. When I saw what he was doing, it was like, oh, he's doing it already. I don't need to, like, okay, I, I can erase that thing from my list and, <laughs> and, and he will do it, but I will help him, like, publish it uh, because I, yeah. I, I, I've gone through this. He was, like, and he approached me and he asked me also, like, hey, can we do this? And and I, I know nothing. I, I'm just writing the thing. I know nothing about publishing. I, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I at least went through already. I, I have like at least that experience, and I, I'm I, we're working in, in that. And but I also want to keep doing my own stuff. Like one of them is like uh, I want to do a Dia de Muertos game, which is the Chantolo RPG uh, thing, and I have like drafts and and sketch uh, like some very rough ideas, and and it has gone through so many iterations like i i i'm not like ready yet like to put it out and try to start to play testing it but but yeah like that's something i want to do uh and many other things like the problem is now time <laughs> yeah of course yeah because that's i also right. i i also work like full time for for magpie games doing layout okay yeah um I was wondering like what, uh, like some of what your involvement with them is, but yeah, the, I mean, the time thing, uh, you know, on the, on the development side, like something I hadn't really fully considered when I started, uh, making my own stuff is like play mm -hmm. testing because yeah. it's not just your time that you have to manage and it, cause then it becomes, uh, you have to involve other people's, uh, time and, and yeah, yeah. so it's and not it, just it, like. It's not just like, do I have time tonight to do this? Yes. Like, do three or four other people <laughs> also have to like time at the exact same time that I have time? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And and I wish I could like I'm still not big enough like to pay playtesters, so I have to be like friends asking favors of friends, and as you say, like being able to find also themselves time in, in in their schedule. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's tough. Cool. Well. um, is there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you uh, that you think I should know or that you know our listeners should know? Or like any projects you want to plug? Anything like that? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, if you, if you are interested in in what we talk about, like this game of the wall, and and interested in like Mexican or urban fantasy, uh, you can find more about the game the game is printed and and it's sent to backers but uh i'm still like mm, working on the on the sell on the sell side of it like on the retail side of it like on on an online store and all that on all that but you can f like go to nawalrpg.com and and sign in there if it, i will i will be sending information about how like how are people going to be able to find it like to buy a physical copy if they if they want a physical copy, and I'm also planning in like bringing it later to to like the, the digital version into Drive Through RPG, like for people also to to buy it there. Like, but like I said, like and and a huge chunk of like my my end of the year was swallowed by Avatar RPG, so it 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 was it's been crazy. But yeah. Um, and that's you. That's what you've been working on, or one of the things you're working on at um, yeah. at Magpie, right? Yeah, yeah. So I saw yeah, they yeah. got the license for that, which uh, is a that's a pretty good get for them, for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it was crazy. Like it it blew away our our expectations. Uh, but yeah, and it's been like very fun. Also, like um, I, I actually like like went and read. I I I'm fan of the shows, but I have never read the comics. So now that I, we were into going into this this project I, I i bought i bought some of the comics like and, and read them and i may buy more like when i got time to to like read the whole thing like through the expanded universe in the comics but yeah yeah it it, it i mean it's 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 been crazy like 
as a fan, like it's been very fun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. But yeah, like uh, the the supplement for Nawal, it's gonna, it's it's called Dream Wars. So I'm I'm gonna also work hard to bring it like out uh, this year, hopefully. And uh, but yeah, like through nawalrpg.com, you can find there the player materials. You can download there like the playbooks and and the character sheets. You can learn a little bit about it there and i probably put a quick start a free quick start there later um but yeah i mean that i think that that's and, and later this year i am also planning like to 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 do that 5e setting exalva um so for that you you can find information in smokingmirrorgames.com Great, great, cool. And um, so I usually like to ask, like, end the the show by asking somebody to recommend one comic book that they didn't work on. But I think for you, I'll ask, um, what's one role playing game that you didn't work on that uh, you think other people should check out? That I didn't work on. Um, I like. I personally liked a lot, like the visuals. I haven't had an opportunity to play it, but I like a lot the Simbarum. Simbarum. From Free League, yeah, uh, oh. it's very beautiful. Like visually, it's very very compelling. Like I I, I like the setting and the and the visuals of of, of the game. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't had it. I, I've read it, so I have kind of an idea how how the game plays, but I haven't had a time to a chance to play it. But like, yeah, if you like pre RPGs, like you should check it out. Great. All right. Well, thanks again for, for taking the time to come on and um, uh, best of luck with getting uh, all the new projects out the door this year. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank to you for the time and for having me here. 